What's happening guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to my garage. My last video I did was actually a garage tour, so if you guys have not seen that video yet, definitely go check that out. I think that answers a lot of the questions that I get on a regular basis about you know the types of flooring that I have, the types of lighting, that sort of stuff, so definitely go check out that video. In today's video, I wanna go in depth on the detailing products that I use when I detail my cars, as well as my pressure washing setup over here because I do get a lot of questions about that, and I also get a lot of questions about all of the detail products that are in this cabinet here. So let's get into today's Today's video. Now, I wouldn't actually call myself an actual detailer because I don't have any polishers or anything like that, but I do like to maintain my clean vehicle. So my M3 over here is actually ceramic coated. This was done professionally by Eastside Auto Spa in Cincinnati. So it does have Seaport's Finest on here. It was all paint corrected. There's also clear bra on here. So all that stuff was done basically right when I got the car. So for me, it's more of a matter of maintaining the coating and just trying to keep it as clean as I possibly can. So the products that I use, I will show you here in a minute, but first I wanna talk about this little setup over here. So some of the stuff may look familiar to you if you guys are followers of the Obsessed Garage channel. So this on top here is actually my electric pressure washer. This is a Krenzla 1622. This is not Matt Mormon's 1322 TS. This is the 1622. So the output on this is going to be 1600 PSI at 1 1.8 gallons per minute. And uh, in my opinion, it does really, really well. So the main difference between my 1622 and Matt's 1322 is the fact that this does not have the total stop feature. So what I mean by the total stop feature, Matt's version, basically when you have a gun and wand connected onto here, when you actually let go of the trigger, the motor will actually stop. Whereas this one will continually run throughout the entire process. So this is on the whole time I'm washing the car. Um, there is a little start and stop button up here. So after I am done foaming the car, I'll actually turn this off for a little bit. And uh, that's when I will go out there with my mitt and I'll agitate the paint. But uh, for the most part, this just stays on and it's extremely, extremely quiet, which is by far my favorite thing about this setup. I used to have this one over here. This is a gas powered one that I used to use. This is a Generac 2500, very, very loud. And I'm sure the neighbors hated it but this one is whisper quiet. I can basically have a conversation and talk just like I am right now. And whoever I'm talking to can easily hear me. So that is the greatest feature of this. This is a really high quality machine. It's Swiss made. Um, I think I bought this for around $900. And at the time, the 1322 was not actually available. So I picked this up several years ago. It's been running like a champ ever since. So next up, we do have a couple different jumper hoses here. So this is also from Obsessed Garage. This is an MTM quick disconnect here. And this is actually connected to this jumper hose, which is about three feet, I believe. And it runs from the pressure washer down to my Cox hose reel right here. Additionally, I do have a Continental hose here. This was a custom size that I got from Matt, also from Obsessed Garage. And um, it, this connects basically to my hose bib down here. So the water comes straight out of there, all the way up into this. In this 90 degree fitting I purchased somewhere online, it fits perfectly, I've never had a leak or anything like that. So the water goes from the hose bib through here, through the actual pump, and then comes out through here, follows the black hose into the Cox hose reel and then right out the back here. So moving down, this is a, I think this is an 18 inch by eight inch stainless steel shelf. This was also from Obsessed Garage. Um, this was like a $150 shelf, but looks super, super clean. Very, very nice. And uh, obviously supports the weight. I think this Krenzla is like 45 pounds or something around that range. This here is a Cox hose reel. This is for a pressure washer hose. As you can see, and it does have a Cobra Jet 100 foot hose. This is also sourced from Obsessed Garage, uh, as is this. So the other thing that I have down here is going to be my Strongway garden hose reel. Um, this was actually the first thing I bought when I started doing this entire setup. I wanted a really nice hose reel, and this is extremely, extremely nice. Um, I know a lot of guys use Ely. I'd say this is very, very comparable to the Ely, only it's a little bit cheaper. So this was about $125 from Northern Tool. I basically have a plywood board back here because when I initially put all this together, there was no um, studs or anything really back there. So what I did was I uh, bought this plywood here, put it up, and then I mounted everything to the plywood. And uh, it's been there ever since. I obviously have a dedicated wall outlet right here for that. This is a 20 amp circuit, which is required for the Krenzla. 
So this is my version of Matt's kind of uh, wall mounted solution and I've really enjoyed using this over the last several years and I will be taking this to my new house. So moving over here to the cabinet, actually I'll show you this too. So this is my Mosmatic gun and wand, also purchased from Obsessed Garage. Super high quality, this does have the expensive swivel on here on the end. Um, so this, these two pieces here, this and the wand down there are, I don't even remember, $150 or something like that. Um, it also does have an MTM quick, quick disconnect here on the top. So very easy to switch things out. Same thing down here. This is the Mosmatic wand with a 40 degree angle there. Um, I use this it's basically all the time. It's gotten a lot of use over the years. And as you can see, very simple to put together since it does have the quick disconnect on here. Just goes on just like that and you're ready to rock. Same thing with this one. Also quick disconnect. I can change with a different uh, nozzle up here, a different orifice, and uh, we're ready to go. I can also pull this off of here and swap this over. This is basically how I do my wheels because there is no real reason to have this giant wand when you're doing the wheels, you know, up close. So this is how I do that. But uh, generally when I wash the car, I have this whole thing together and um, having this angle on the wand really helps you get the roof, especially on an SUV or something like that. All right, so moving on to my detailing cabinet. This is where all the good stuff is. I like to vary my products. Um, I like to try different things and I kind of rotate through a bunch of these things, but I'll kind of show you the main ones that I use. Man, this, this cabinet smells amazing. It's just got so many different chemical smells, but they all smell delightful. Um, all these towels here are mo mostly from either the rag company or auto fiber, um, combination of the two. So I use a lot of these different ones for specific things, specific colors do different things for me. Um, like for example, these dark gray ones here, I specifically use for wheels. Um, these more soft, you know, plush towels are used for the paint, um, used with drying aids. Same with these back here. Um, some of these are kind of multi-purpose. Um, if I ever do any like light polishing or something like that, um, I'll probably use something smaller like these down here. Um, these are typically my door jam towels, these yellow ones here. These up top, these are also for um, drying. These are also for wheels. And obviously you can see up here, I do have several different mitts. So this is from the rag company. I kind of rotate through these as well. Um, this is a microfiber madness Incredit mitt, and this was from Obsessed Garage. It's just an older mitt that I've had laying around for a while. And so, as you can see, I've got some little polishing blocks. Way back there, I've got some bug blocks, um, some polishing pads, but I don't actually have any actual polishers, um, but that's on my list of things to buy at some point in time. I do have some window towels here. That's what this blue one is. Um, I've got a couple more blue ones back there. Brushes, so this is my interior brush. I use this for dusting, basically. Um, I don't do a ton on the inside, to be honest with you guys. I just try to keep it relatively clean and keep the dust off as much as I can. Um, by far, my favorite wheel product are these wheel mitts. These are also from Obsessed Garage. These are like $10, and uh, I've got a couple of these here, and they are fantastic, so this one's gotten a lot of use. could probably throw this one away, but uh, it's lambskin on the inside, fits perfectly in your hand, and this allows you to get up inside the crevices of the wheel. Super, super nice. These are Adams Polishes foam blocks. I use these for tire shine. I'd say majority of the products that I use are the ones that are hanging right here on top. Um, this is just an empty bottle, press-all bottle that I wanted to try from Obsessed Garage. So this doesn't have anything in it. It does have a weight in it, so um, sits up nicely, so I'm excited to use this on something at some point. Not sure what I'm going to put in there yet. Maybe like bead maker or something like that. But um, here I've got a couple different products that I use. So for toppers, since I do have a ceramic coating, I do like to use a drying aid. Um, and I rotate basically with the bead maker here. And I also rotate with CarPro Reload. So these are my go-tos for the time being. 
Um, for wheels, I kind of rotate. If I want to do a more aggressive cleaning, I use Adam's wheel cleaner here, but on a regular, you know, maintenance type wash, this is what I use. This is Brake Buster. And then I've got a couple other products that I've acquired over the years. Um, the Rag Company was kind of a sponsor of mine. I was a grand ambassador for them for uh, about a year. And so um, they sent me over some of these Wobos products. Um, this is a quick detailer, interior finisher. Um, same thing with this one over here. This is Car Pro Inside. So this is for uh, leather cleaning and just basic cleanings on the inside maintenance type cleanings. So I kind of use these every once in a while. Quick detailers I don't use a ton of. Um, I will use it every once in a while, but for the most part, if the car is a little bit dirty, I don't really like to use quick detailers because I feel like I'm just rubbing dirt into the paint. So I'd rather do a full wash. Same thing with this H2O garden gloss. This stuff smells amazing, but uh, don't use this all that often, but it's there if I need it. Um, additionally, for wheels, I use Hyde's Rust Stopper. This is for the rotors uh, because the BMWs are notorious for leaving a lot of uh, orange brake rust. So this kind of helps prevent that along with the uh, brake buster here. Uh, for tire shines, I rotate a little bit, but my main product that I use is going to be CarPro Pearl. Um, I've had this bottle for several years and clearly I'm not even halfway through it yet. Um, additionally, I do have some Wobos Tire Restore that I also like to rotate in. So my car shampoos are actually back here in the back. Um, I rotate between Adam's car shampoo and I can show you some of the gallons down here, but um, it's usually that. Um, maybe once a month I'll use CarPro Reset in combination with CarPro Reload just to maintain the coating some more. I also have some Wobos car shampoo back here. Um, there's a couple of these MTM bottles that I acquired from a friend of mine that I have not used yet, but um, a lot of the more random things are kind of in the back that I don't use on a regular basis. Um, I do have invisible glass. This is what I use to clean all of my interior glass. I do have Stoner's Tar and Sap Remover as well for those stubborn times. Uh, what else? Yeah, that's the majority of it. I also just purchased some of this. This is uh, hyper dressing. So this is Meguiar's and uh, typically use this on the engine bay, kind of spray on and leave it there and it should give it a nice, nice matte finish. Um, I do have a leather eat kit here. So I did a full restore on my leather on the M3 and using leather eek, fantastic product. Uh, this was like a hundred dollars or something, but I can get multiple uses out of this thing and it really, really rejuvenates the leather and brings it all back to life. Um, over here, I've just got a couple random little things that I don't really use anymore. You know, just little tire gel things that I've acquired over the years as samples. And, you know, I've got some uh, Meguiar's Endurance back there, clay bars, that sort of stuff. But um, I don't really use the clay bars for anything. I did use clay and wax um, when I had my F30, 335, but again, the M3 ceramic coated, so I have no use for some of that stuff. Moving on down here, so this is my foam cannon. This is an MTM PF22. I've got two of these actually. This is by far the best foam cannon on the market. Yeah, you can buy yourself a cheap $20 one from Amazon, but um, this has never failed me. It does have a weight problem, but uh, the dot two version, uh, they fixed that you know, balancing problem. Um, this was another great purchase of mine. This is a Master Blaster Sidekick. This is the small little handheld version. This is what I use to dry the car and get all the, um, you know, all the extra water out of the crevices and stuff like that. This was um, about $85 or something, and I use this all the time. Great, great product, especially with the ceramic coating this gets all the water off. It's it's really, really quite amazing. Um, I do have some IK foamers back here that I acquired from the rag company, and um, I've used those a couple times, mostly on wheels, but uh, you know, when I'm, when I'm sitting here with my actual pressure washer over there and I can just do it all with a pressure washer, I really don't have much of a use for these um, little foamers, but they're there. Um, for gallons, I do have quite a few gallons down here because I do go through product pretty frequently. 
So this is going to be Brake Buster. I've got some Optimum Car Wash Soap. So this is one of my other soaps that I rotate in. Uh, let's see, this is um, Clay Luber back here, which I've never really used. I do have two gallons, or one, one and a quarter gallons of bead maker. So I go through a lot of that. Um, I've got another gallon of Brake Buster back here. So I do have some Adam's Wheel Cleaner, but this is pretty abrasive stuff, so I try not to use this that often. And then I do have two gallons of Adam's Car Wash Shampoo, which is pretty much my go-to for um, soaps. So I kind of like to try different soaps and I rotate different things in periodically um, just to try new products. And so, you know, I had some uh, Chemical Guys Honeydew Snow Foam in here for a while and I like to buy gallons. It's just a little bit cheaper and I go through it pretty quickly anyway. So, but yeah, that's all that stuff. Um, additionally, for wheel cleaning products, this is a microfiber Madness Incredibrush. I use this for a pretty long time and uh, served me pretty well, but I finally went and picked up one of these. Um, this is an easy detail brush. This is the large. Uh, this is really good to use on barrels, but it does fling back at you a little bit, but this is really, really good to use on barrels and on wheel wells. Um, additionally, I've got a couple other things in here that are a little bit dirty at this point. So here's another wheel mitt. This is a Tough Shine tire brush for cleaning the tires. And then I do have another brush. This is my uh, brush that I got from the rag company as well. Um, it's a boar's hair and I use this on lug nuts. So yeah, that's the um, majority of the products that I use. And like I said, I like to rotate things in and try new stuff. So, so if you happen to have any recommendations on products that you think I might like, um, please let me know in the comments below because you know, like I said, you know, I like to try new things and um, I'm not really brand specific, uh, maybe on certain things, but always willing to try something new if it's good. So if you guys have any comments or questions about anything that I've talked about today, um, please let me know in the comments below. Leave me some suggestions on new products to try out. And uh, I guess we'll see you guys the next time. Take care, we'll see you then.